Welcome to Kane's Corner with Matt Kane. I am back for another episode. You may have heard me last episode. I was going to do matchmaking for at the end of that one. I decided to cut it because it was pretty long. Um, but I really wanted to do this. I really love this concept, so we're going to do it. It's quarterback matchmaking. It's Matt's matchmaking. Um, it's basically like QB Tinder. I am going to be matching 12 teams with their potential suitors for next year, whether it's a trade, a free, agents, uh, a free agency pickup, or they're sticking with the same guy. Now, I am doing this during the free agency week, the start of free agency. I will say that Mitch Trubitsky just signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'm hoping to get this posted Tuesday, which is tomorrow, and kind of avoid other quarterbacks being signed. If I don't get it posted by Tuesday or if a uh, quarterback sign and I have them with a different team, you understand why. I'm hoping I get it out as quickly as possible. We're going to try our best. This isn't going to be that long of an episode. So let's get right into it. I'm very excited for this. The first edition of Matt's matchmaking first team we got on the list is the cleveland browns um well first off I, I compiled a whole list of 12 teams who i think the quarterback situation is up in the air there was talks in the in the offseason so far so that's that list includes the browns buccaneers colts 49ers eagles giants lions panthers saints seahawks steelers and the texans Let's dive right into it. Starting out with the Cleveland Browns. I'm going to match them up with Baker Mayfield, their starting quarterback ever since Baker got into the league. I think this is going to be Baker's probably last year. Not a huge fan of him, but I do think that this is going to be the year where they're like, Baker, prove to us that you want to be the quarterback. Prove to us that you're going to be the franchise guy. We saw what Baker did in 2021. Just over 3,000 yards, 17 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. A six and eight record. I will. I know. I will note that he had a. He battled through a shoulder injury, very detrimental. Still not a huge fan of Baker. Browns made the playoffs two years ago. Still, I think this is Baker's prove it year, and I think he's gonna fail. To be honest, Buccaneers. Oh, Tom Brady is back. That's all that needs to be said. Colts. Just traded Carson Wentz. I think they're going to go and trade for a different quarterback. And I'm going to go to the San Francisco 49ers quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they're going to trade for him. I honestly think Jimmy is their best opportunity to get to the playoffs. Jimmy took the 49ers to the playoffs twice. Uh, NFC Championship both times, once going to a Super Bowl. He had a bad, he had a thumb injury late in that uh last year's season, but still had a nine and six record. Like I said, NFC championship, I think it's their best, best opportunity to get to the playoffs. 49ers, you're getting rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. You've got to run it with Trey Lance. I don't, I don't really care. They, you don't trade up for a guy and have him sit after you trade the guy that started before him. It's their only, it's the only thing they have to do. And that's, Start Trey Lance. The Eagles, they're all they're in this rumors about Deshaun Watson. I don't believe them merely for the fact because I loved what Jalen Hurts did. I think they just stick it with Jalen. Um, they made the playoffs last year with him. He's great on the run. He works well with that offensive line, which can be here or there. Um, and, and he's proven that he could be an Eagles quarterback for the time being. I'm not 100% sold on Jalen, but I do think that given what he did last year, I think it's in their best interest to keep the three picks that they have and go uh, run it with Traylon, run it with Jalen Hurts for the next uh, season. Their rival, the Giants, now that Mitch Trubisky is gone, he's on the Steelers. I think it's going to be a proven year for Daniel Jones. Uh, he's got a new head coach this year. It's Brian Dable. I love Dable at the, what he's done with the Bills. He's a great offensive-minded coach. I think Daniel Jones, is. this is going to be a year that he needs to prove that he's good. And they need to bring some type of weapons and an offensive line to help him out. Give him that little push 
and I think we're going to see the true colors of Daniel Jones this year. Detroit Lions just signed uh, Tim Boyle back. You know, I love Tim Boyle. He's an old Packer player, the real TB12. But I do think that they're just going to stick with Jared Goff. I, I can see them drafting a quarterback in the second round, third round, but I don't think they're going to go out and draft a quarterback with pick number two, at least or trade down to draft a quarterback. Just stick it with Jared Goff. He had three wins last year, uh, just eclipsed over 3,000 yards, 19 touchdowns, and only eight interceptions. A decent passer rating of 91.5. I think you have to stick it with him. You know, Jared was highly drafted. He was a number one pick back in 2015. He played for the Rams. I mean, he, he played decent for the Rams. They made it to the Super Bowl. They had some deep playoff runs. They made it to the playoffs. In his second year with the Lions, I don't see them moving off him, and I don't see how that's the right answer to do. So I'm going to match him up with the Lions. The Carolina Panthers. Now, they tried Sam Donald last year. Didn't really work out. They tried Cam Newton again. Didn't work out. I think the Panthers are going to go out and make a big splash for Deshaun Watson. Watson just was uh, cleared of all the lawsuits that he had, all the sexual assault cases. And I think the Panthers and Saints are the best suitors for Watson. Like I said before, the Eagles are a really good su- uh, really good suitor to be a front runner for him. I just don't think that they're going to pull the trigger after what Jalen did this past year. I think a team that's going to pull the trigger is the Carolina Panthers because we saw them get Stephon Gilmore. They have J.C. Horn. They've really uh, improved their defense to the point where I think if they get a good quarterback, put alongside D.J. Moore, Robbie Anderson, I think that they could be a team that can contend for a wild card. Obviously not with the Bucs there. I don't think they're going to win the NFC South. But bringing in Deshaun Watson would help them so much. Unfortunately, I do think if they get Deshaun Watson, they would have to trade Christian McCaffrey to the Texans. I would see the deal kind of being a Christian McCaffrey and maybe two firsts. I've heard three firsts for Watson. I think if you throw in McCaffrey, two firsts, maybe a second round pick, maybe a third round pick, it can get a deal done because the Texans can really use a a good running back. Let's be real, fantastic running back when he's healthy. I'm going to give Watson to the Panthers. The Saints, it's interesting what the Saints can do. Obviously, it's it's past the Drew Brees era. New coach, Dennis Allen, after Sean Payton retired. I think you run it back. You sign Jameis Winston. I think if you you could give Jameis Winston a cap-friendly deal. I, I, I think with the Saints, they're always under the cap hit. They struggle with the salary cap everything like that. I think you could give Jameis Winston a cap-friendly deal, especially since Taysom Hill, the backup, presumably going to be the backup, is going to have, this has a huge cap hit after they signed him to that ridiculous deal. So I'm gonna give Watson, or Winston, another chance in New Orleans. Last year, he he had a five and two record, 1,170 yards, 14 touchdowns, three interceptions. He played fantastic in the opener against his Green Bay Packers. He played pretty well for the Saints, I would say. Definitely better than what he did two years ago with the, or three years ago with the Buccaneers. Give me Winston in New Orleans. The Seattle Seahawks. Now, this is interesting. We just broke the news. Russell Wilson got traded. If you didn't see that first episode, Kane's Corner, go look it out. Go check it out. Went through a whole trade analysis. But here for the Seahawks, I think they they need to go in the rebuild mode. I don't think they're going to get Watson. I don't understand why you would get why you would trade for Watson because you trade your trade all your picks for Jamal Adams, trade Wilson for picks, basically equalizing that out. I don't know why you trade picks for Watson because Watson Wilson is not too different, and especially with getting rid of Bobby Wagner, your best defensive anchor. I don't see them going for that for a great quarterback. So I think the Seahawks are going to use the ninth pick to draft Malik Willis. However, I do think Teddy Bridgewater will be that week one starter. They'll sign him, let Willis sit behind Bridgewater for a little while. 
And what I love about Willis is he has a he can throw a deep ball. Now he in the combine, it it was looking like Josh Allen type of deep balls. Obviously, Allen can really throw a deep. He could throw a deep. Uh, he's probably the he could probably throw the furthest ball in the NFL right now. So I love Willis, but I do think you'd start Bridgewater. Let Willis sit after his um, college career at Auburn and Liberty. Pittsburgh Steelers just signed Mitch Trubisky. However, I'm going to stick with my pick. Steelers draft Kenny Pickett. I think Pickett is going to fall in this draft after a slow combine, I guess you could call it, an underperforming combine. So I think the Steelers, I think Pickett's going to fall all the way down to the Steelers. Saints might, might nibble on Pickett. I don't think they will. I got the Steelers taking Pickett. And whether I'm gonna stick with my pick and I'm gonna stick with my pick and say Pickett's the starter because of what he did in his fifth year, 4,319 yards, 42 touchdowns, seven interceptions, pretty much more touchdowns in that year than his whole career and overall. They stick with Pickett at quarterback. But I wouldn't be shocked if Trubitsky starts and Pickett sits. I think it, it, that would be very interesting if they do pick Pickett. Like I said, Kenny was my when I made the, when I made my notes. Kenny was my guy to pick uh, for the Steelers. But with the Trubisky news, not sure what to make of it. I'll stick with Pickett. Last team, the Texans. Davis Mills. That's your only option because what Davis Mills did last year was pretty good towards the end of the season, especially. He did have a two and only a two and nine record, but he really relieved Tyrod Taylor when Taylor got hurt. He he played from week two to nine, 12 to 18. I like Davis Mills towards the end of the year. I think you have to give him a shot. You could draft a quarterback or or with the Watson trade. You could go out to get a to get a backup quarterback. I don't know if they get Sam Donald. Houston's interesting. I would put a note in Houston because I don't think teams are talking about Houston that much. I say Davis Mills starts the year off, and I say they, they stick with him throughout the whole year, depending what he does, obviously. But I think Davis Mills is a good quarterback, a decent quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a franchise guy, but I think it's it's a guy that they stick with for next year quite possibly looking into the years after they draft or keep Davis there. Those are the 12 teams. I have, we have the final predictions up, the final suitors to match the Matt's matchmaking. Let me know if you think something else, if you don't think that there's a fit or if you think there's a better one. I would love to hear you guys in the comments. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow along. College basketball is ramping up. We have the tournament on Thursday. I'm definitely going to try to get an episode out before Thursday as well. So we're going to have a couple episodes this week. Maybe we'll see one into next week about the NCAA tournament or more NFL news. Make sure you follow along. This was Kane's Corner with Matt Kane. See you guys next time.